Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tiny arms. Massive reputation. But how did this notorious monster go from a lanky-looking crocodile to the iconic predator we know today? Don't worry, we'll explain everything. From the crocs it all started with, mid-tier predator to lizard king, T-Rex biceps and why their arms got so small, and how it all came crashing down. So to initiate the promise of our tale, let's start from the very beginning. Around 252 million years ago, Earth experienced the largest mass extinction event in its history. The Permian-Triassic extinction, aptly nicknamed the Great Dying or Great Unaliving for our millennial viewers. 90% of all marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrates were unalived during this time, dramatically reshaping Earth's ecosystems. The causes of this extinction are still debated, but they likely included massive volcanic eruptions in what is now Siberia, leading to extreme global warming, ocean acidification and oxygen depletion. See, kids, don't listen to the government. Global warming sucks. But with so many ecological niches suddenly vacant from this extinction, the survivors faced a world with reduced competition. This created a literal world of opportunities for new lineages to evolve. In this post-extinction world, the archosaurs took the stage. Their name means ruling reptile, which fits well because they ruled and were reptiles. More specifically, archosaurs were diapsid reptiles meaning they had two holes on each side of their skulls, a feature that allowed for stronger jaw muscles. They also managed to invent themselves some new ankles. These fancy new feet provided greater stability and flexibility, allowing for efficient movement both on land and in the water. This characteristic would later allow some archosaur descendants to evolve impressive speed and agility, key traits for future predatory dinosaurs. The archosaur lineage split into two major branches Around 250 million years ago, Pseudosuchia, a group including ancestors of modern crocodilians such as crocodiles, alligators and caimans. The other group is, hmm, let me try and pronounce this properly, Ave Meta Tarsalia. This branch led to the ancestors of pterosaurs and dinosaurs. Members of this group scrapped the classic all fours of most reptiles and developed bipedal postures. As a result, they often possessed longer hind limbs than forelimbs a precursor to the body plan seen in later dinosaurs. Hint, hint, T-Rex arms. And they didn't stop there with the new legs. Instead of legs splayed out to the side, theirs shifted underneath their body, giving them increased flexibility and speed. These fresh kicks permitted the archosaurs of this group to dominate the Mesozoic era as ferocious terrestrial predators. Through these evolutionary innovations, archosaurs evolved to fill many ecological niches during the Triassic, becoming some of the top dogs of terrestrial ecosystems. Fast forward to the late Triassic period, Earth's ecosystems were recovering from the previous mass extinction. In this period, dinosaurs first appeared and quickly diversified into a wide array of badass forms, one form of which was the theropods. This is where things start to get serious. Make sure to stick around to see the iconic T-Rex evolving, and please consider liking and subscribing to let us know that you've enjoyed this video. We'd love to have you join our future journeys through time, and we greatly appreciate your interaction with our channel. And we encourage any future requests to be left in the comments. Now for the theropods. Theropods were characterized by several traits that set them apart from other early dinosaurs and positioned them as effective hunters. Bipedalism provided freedom of their forearms, which may have allowed theropods to grasp prey if they could reach. It also meant they were faster and taller too, making surveying the land easier and allowing them to mention that they're over six foot in their tinder profile. These T-Rex ancestors also had hollow bones. Speed, agility, and awesome birds 250 million years later are all beneficial factors of this evolution. And for those freaks among you, let's talk about toes. Theropods had three functional toes on each foot, with a possible fourth smaller toe, that were positioned in a way that provided a stable stance for balance and movement. This tridactyl foot structure was critical for their bipedal movement, and left the iconic foot tracks we know and love. Now my granddaughter says you must subscribe because no free dogs. Apparently it's a Gen Z thing. Several genera of early theropods have been discovered in the fossil record, each representing various evolutionary experiments within the theropod lineage. Let's take a look at some of T-Rex's early, smaller ancestors. One of the earliest known theropods, Herrerasaurus, lived around 
231 million years ago in what is now Argentina. About 3 to 4 meters long, it was relatively small compared to later theropods. Its forelimbs were longer and more functional than those of later theropods, suggesting it may have used them to grasp prey. So why did their arms get shorter over time? Stick around to find out. There were also smaller theropods like Eoraptor, growing up to only one meter in length and feeding on a variety of foods as diet specialization had not yet evolved in theropods. In what's more like T. rex territory, living around 220 million years ago, Chilophysis was a slender, agile theropod that grew up to three meters long and is one of the best studied early dinosaurs due to the large number of specimens found in New Mexico. With a lightweight frame and long legs, it was a fast-moving predator and is one of the first theropods to show some of the signature adaptations that would later define larger carnivorous theropods. Over time, theropods would develop even more specialized features, such as larger, stronger jaws and more robust claws and arms filling a variety of niches as small insect eaters, pack hunters, and apex predators. Now we move on to one very important evolution that links theropods to tyrannosaurs in a group called Kilurosaurs. Around 170 million years ago, in the middle to late Jurassic, Kilurosaurs evolved as a broad group of theropod dinosaurs that include both small and large carnivores, omnivores, and eventually herbivores. This lineage would eventually give rise to a wide array of dinosaurs, including dromaeosaurs like Velociraptor, Ornithomimosaurs, or ostrich-like dinosaurs, and Maniraptorans, which would eventually lead to modern birds. Calurosaurs were initially small and agile, often no larger than a modern dog or small bear, and were well suited for hunting smaller prey. Their light, flexible body structure, coupled with sharper senses, and an increased brain-to-body ratio would play a role in the success of the Tyrannosaurids as they emerged. The Tyrannosaurids were one of the earliest branches within the Coelurosaur group, evolving specific traits that set them apart from other Coelurosaurs, such as elongated skulls, specialized teeth, such as and unique skeletal skulls. features. Although these early Tyrannosaurids were not yet the massive apex predators that would emerge much later, they had already begun to develop characteristics that would later define their iconic descendants. One of the first notable Tyrannosaurids was Proceratosaurus, a dinosaur that lived about 165 million years ago in what is now England. It was a small, lightly built dinosaur, likely covered with feathers. With a skull crest and a relatively slender body, Proceratosaurus was well suited for a fast and agile predatory lifestyle, probably feeding on small vertebrates. But over time, Tyrannosaurids began to develop into bigger, scarier animals. Skulls got more robust, teeth got thicker and sharper, bites got bitier, and they began to crunch through their prey, a trait that would later be exaggerated in T. rex. Brains got larger, helping to detect prey and make beneficial choices, not so bird-brained anymore. Although they did have feathers, as shown by early Tyrannosaurid fossils such as D. Long in China, these feathers would have been used for insulation as they became partially endothermic or warm-blooded, as well as for displays in mating. Slay Queen. Early Tyrannosaurids still had relatively long arms compared to later members of the family. While many a meme has been made about short T. rex arms, these shorter arms evolved to become more specialized and powerful, though not as functional for grasping. During the late Jurassic, large herbivorous dinosaurs like sauropods and stegosaurs ruled the lands, as well as large predators like allosaurs and ceratosaurs. This meant that the role of big boy was already taken. Therefore, in the Jurassic, the short king and queen tyrannosaurids were mid-tier predators or scavengers. By the early Cretaceous, tyrannosaurids had spread across much of Asia, Europe and North America, continuing to evolve both physically and ecologically, as seen in key discoveries like Guanlong in China. As the large allosaurid and carcharodontosaurid predators began to decline in the later Cretaceous, Tyrannosaurids would be positioned to shamelessly fill the ecological gap. The evolutionary changes that occurred during this period, the strengthening of the skull, development of large bone-crushing teeth, and reduction of the forelimbs, set the foundation for later giant Tyrannosaurs. Enter the bulking phase. During the mid to late Cretaceous period, the Tyrannosaurids began undergoing remarkable physical transformations. By this period, some Tyrannosaur species began achieving unprecedented sizes for the group. Daspletosaurus grew up to 9 meters or 30 feet in length and weighed over 3 tons, 
and Albertosaurus reached similar lengths, but was slightly more lightly built, allowing it to move quickly. These larger tyrannosaurs had longer, stronger hind limbs and a more massive overall build, adaptations that equipped them to bring down large prey. Their jaws got even stronger and eyes became more forward-facing, enhancing their ability to track and hunt moving prey. Tyrannosaurs of this era had D-shaped teeth with serrated edges, often described as banana-shaped because of their thickness and slight curvature. These teeth were strong and resistant to breakage, designed not just for cutting flesh, but also for crunching through bone. Now for the mystery of the infamous T-Rex arms. This shrinking arm trend is seen in Daspletosaurus and Albertosaurus, which had short, powerful arms compared to earlier, smaller tyrannosaurs. But they had their uses. Jim bros look away now. Despite their small size, the arms of larger tyrannosaurs were still muscular, with large muscle attachments that indicate they could exert a strong grip. Although their exact purpose is still debated, these arms may have helped with stability during feeding or withholding down prey. It may also have been an evolutionary trade-off. By minimizing the weight and energy devoted to their forelimbs, these tyrannosaurs could allocate more energy to building massive hind limbs and powerful jaw muscles. Remember, never skip leg day. By the late Cretaceous, the gradual decline of other large theropod groups, like the Carcharodontosaurs and Spinosaurids, left an ecological niche open for large, powerful predators. Tyrannosaurs moved into this role, especially in North America and Asia, where they became the primary apex predators. The increase in herbivorous dinosaur diversity, especially among hadrosaurs and ceratopsians, go vegans, provided an abundant food source for tyrannosaurs. As specialized carnivores, tyrannosaurs adapted to exploit this prey by evolving the necessary strength, agility, and sensory adaptations. And finally, the big reveal. Adaptations over millions of years culminated in the evolution of Tyrannosaurus rex, which appeared around 68 million years ago. This final form would become one of the most iconic and successful apex predators of the Cretaceous, perfectly suited to dominate its environment until the mass extinction event at the KPG boundary. Tens of millions of years had shaped the T-Rex into a near-perfect predator, but it wasn't for very long. Well, it was for two million years, which is pretty long. But in the grand scheme of things, you get me. Approximately 66 million years ago, the infamous Chicxulub meteor struck and caused monumental changes in the environment. Massive shockwaves and wildfires, global cooling, acid rain, and toxic clouds. As an apex predator, T-Rex was particularly vulnerable to these rapid environmental changes. It required more food than was available as plants died off, and so everything higher up the food chain followed suit. They reproduced slowly, so couldn't keep up with mortality rates, no matter how hard they tried, I'm sure. And T-Rex was likely adapted to relatively stable, warm climates with an abundance of large prey animals. The rapid shift to a colder, darker, and highly toxic environment was likely beyond its tolerance range, leading to its swift demise but they left their legacy with the evolution of birds and Jurassic Park. So thanks for that. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking to let us know and subscribe to join our future journeys. We'd love to have you with us. See you next time.